Good morning, Woody. How you doing? Good morning, Wimp. How you doing? Well, I'm fine. Barry and I are trying to do a show here in Tuscaloosa, and people have been wanting to hear you. And so I thought maybe I could cut through all the stuff and get you, and I appreciate you being on. Well, I'm glad uh, to be on here I, with you all this morning. I know this is, um, you know, it, it, in some ways such a, a homeboy atmosphere for both both Coach Saban and for Dabo and for you, and, it, you know, you're coming back to a school that you cared something about but you want to beat. I certainly understand that and they want to beat you. But talk a little bit about, uh, the, you know, you've organized this thing, got your recruiting organized very, very well, and you're getting good, better players than you did. Talk about your program. Well, first of all, when Dabo has done an excellent job of uh, putting this thing together since he got the job back in 2008. Uh, he went through a lot of trial and errors, errors there early, uh, 2010, you know, we had a very tough year, and then seemed like in 2011, that's when everything turned around. We won that first ACC championship. But you know, everyone that knows Davo and been around him, they know the passion and the energy that he has. Everything that uh, he does, he puts a lot into it. Uh, when he was an assistant coach, he was a very good recruiter, worked hard. He was relentless at it. Uh, signed some very good kids there at Alabama. And early on here at Clemson, uh, one of the biggest names that he got at that time was C.J. Spiller. Yeah. C.J. has uh, kind of been part of the foundation uh, here for us for what we did. And Dabo signed him before he was uh, the head coach. And I will say the next guy that was a big part of us turning this thing around was when he was able to go up to Virginia Beach and uh, get Taj Boyd. And Taj, you know, broke all kind of records here as a quarterback and kind of help lead the path to a, be able to do a lot of things that we're doing here right now on offense. Uh, what uh, what what kind of staff? I know the staff is 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 the staff basically people that he wanted, people that were recommended to him. How, how did the staff get put together? Well, early on, I mean, if you look at the uh, offense right now, yeah, Danny Pierman came here, and he and Danny had ties back to Alabama when we were all there. Daddy played for us here at Clemson and came down uh, to Tuscaloosa with me. And Coach Stallings gave him the opportunity to be a grad assistant and then later on uh, put him on the staff full time. So he and Danny had close ties. Uh, Tony Elliott, Jeff Scott, and Brandon Streeter were all players that played here at Clemson. And he yeah. brought them back uh, into the program. Uh, Robbie Caldwell is our offensive line coach. Robbie is former head coach at Vanderbilt. And uh, is a very, very strong offensive line coach. Had a great reputation all through the years before he became the head coach of Vanderbilt. On the defensive side, he was able to go out to uh, Oklahoma and convince Brent Venables to come in here as a coordinator, which was a very good move. And then uh, after that, Dan Brooks, longtime coach that was at University of Tennessee, a uh, very good recruiter, uh, a lot of good players at Tennessee. He's done the same thing here. Marion Hobby is a guy that played at uh, Shades Valley over in Birmingham, and he and Dabo had ties all the way back to high school. You know, Marion played at Tennessee and then went on and played in the NFL and coached with the New Orleans Saints was David Cutcliffe's defensive coordinator, and Dabo convinced him to come down here and be a part of the staff. And then Mike Reed is a guy – that uh, he and Dabo shared the same recruiting area uh, for years, and he and Mike became friends. Mike was at NC State, and uh, he got Mike to come in here as a secondary coach. So very good staff. Yeah. He's done a very good job of putting these guys together, and we all see now uh, the work that Dabo has done in hiring the staff. Barry? Uh, coach, hey, it's Barry. I, I used to coach at South Carolina, uh, so I, I understand the Clemson, the culture there. Talk a little bit about the people here in, in Tuscaloosa, just about the Clemson community there, how much they love uh, football and love the Tigers there in, in Clemson, South Carolina. You know, uh, Barry, I, when I came here uh, back in the 80s with Danny Forward, uh, I was sitting there in Huntsville, Alabama, and Alabama a and I had heard a lot about Clemson. And, and then all of a sudden I had the opportunity to come here and coach. Um, you know, it's a lot of Alabama ties here. You know, going back to Frank Howard and then Hootie Ingram, Charlie Pell, and uh, <clears throat> Danny Ford and now Dabo. 
and it's a lot of close ties between the two schools. And the, and the thing that I like here, you know, it's a small community, only about 12,000 people. Uh, we've got 18,000 students and a rabid fan base, very similar to what everyone sees week in and week out in the SEC. And when you go back and look at the recruiting, uh, we recruit against schools in the Southeastern Conference probably a lot more than we do schools in the ACC. So we always fight in Georgia. Uh, we're fighting Tennessee, we're fighting Alabama, Auburn, and uh, Florida State. And that's the kind of mentality that's been here through the years. And ACC, you know, for a long time was known as a basketball conference. But, you know, when you looked at the conference, uh, pretty much people looked at Clemson as being the, the football power in this conference. And we won more conference championships than anybody uh, in the history of the conference. But with the addition of Florida State and Virginia Tech and Miami, uh, it's made this conference a lot more viable now in terms of uh, football. Also about Dabo, you know, he just always seems uh, high energy. Is, is he? Does he ever uh, let up? Is there ever a time where he just relaxes, or is he always on full go? Uh, Barry, he's always full go, you know. And uh, I noticed that about him when I was coaching in Alabama. Uh, you know, when we played uh, – uh, Florida that that year back in ninety lost Craig uh, Samuelson and then the next week lost Prince Wembley over at uh, Athens so two best receivers gone and just wanted somebody to be able to do the job and the thing that drew me to Dabo was just the ex- uh, effort and the energy and the fight and the will that he had on the practice field every day that made me give him a chance and he took that opportunity and made the most of it and. You know, he bounces around this building every day. I mean, everybody's a joy. It's no 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 bad days with him. None. Right. And uh on the practice field he's not a tower guy. He's a guy that's walking around practice every day. I mean, you know, showing the kids that he really care about them, they can engage with him. And uh he's just done an excellent job of that. Same thing in this community through the state. Uh, it amazes me all the things that he has to sign. Uh, that staff room is just full from the bottom floor to the top. And, I mean, he'll sit there and, and autograph all of those things because he said if somebody got something from him, he wanted to make sure it was his autograph and not someone else. And that's just the way he is. That's awesome, Dad. Oh, well, I, I mean, I'm not going to get into a lot of X's knows, but, I, you know, Woody's a great coach, and I know he knows that Alabama is very, very good defensively. And uh, I think um, – um, Clemson is elusive offensively. They have a great quarterback. I think this will be, um, I guess the word's uh, interesting game. I, I think um, the ability for Alabama to be able to tack, tackle in the open field is going to be important for them. And I guess the ability for for Clemson to be able to not get tackled in the open field will be important to them. What, what, what do you see in this game? Well, the biggest thing, you know, with us offensively, um, you know, went back at Alabama and a lot of the guys that I worked for, Philip Fulman, Danny Ford, Coach Stalin, I mean, they they all believe in running the football. Yeah. And just the methods are different. And we've been able to do that here, especially uh, this year. I mean, finally, Dabo's got uh, a really good offensive line. Robert Caldwell does a good job with those guys and up front for us on defense and the defensive line. And, I think that's going to be a big key in the game. And uh, neither team is going to be able to turn the football over to give the other, other team more opportunities. But, mm-hmm. you know, offensively, Deshaun Watson has really taken us to another level. I yeah. mean, you know, it makes people have to defend the whole field now. And, uh, you know, we're able to run the ball just different from what we did when I was there at Alabama because we can spread it out. Wayne Gallman has done a very good job for us as a as a running back, and we've got some adequate guys behind him. But Deshaun Watson is a different dimension. I mean, this kid uh, can run the ball. He's a very accurate passer, and you know you can't you, you can't just sit there and try to defend uh, one thing. And that's that's what's been able to uh, be able to help us this year. And, and the receivers outside, uh, we have some tremendous guys there. A lot of good speed. And I think the same thing with Alabama. I mean, Jake, Jake Coker has done a very good job uh, the latter part of the season since the uh, Ole Miss game. And uh, Derrick Henry, 
naturally. I mean, you see him do some of the things that that he does uh, in the running game. And, uh, you know, same thing with us. I mean, we're going to have to stop the run. And if you do that, you better be good against the pass because Coca has done a very good job in being able to get the football down the field with Calvin Ridley. Coach, I want to ask you, as the Heisman deal was going on, they had McCaffrey, um, obviously Henry won it, but Deshaun Watson, all three of those kids, uh, forget how great they were, players they are, because they wouldn't have been there if they weren't, but they all seem just like quality, quality young men. What college football and athletics should be all about? Just kind of talk about what kind of person Deshaun Watson really is. Uh, Barry, when he's in this building, I mean, he's a, he's very quiet. Um you know, when he first came here, he uh, he had a 4.0 uh, in, in, in his first semester here. And, you know, he's a, above three point now. Uh, one of the things that uh, he told me uh, in the hallway last week, you know, out of all the things that he's been able to do uh, since he's been here, some of the accomplishment that he has, he said next year this time he won't have his degree, and that's three and a half years. So that just shows you what type of person he is. And uh, on the field, he's a guy that not only gives the offense confidence, he gives our whole team confidence. And it's amazing when the defense makes adjustments. Those guys want to get up off the bench to come and, and be able to watch the offense perform. And I think a big reason in that is him. And you know, once we make adjustments on offense, he's down there with those defensive guys. He's watching them. And, you know, it's good to have a guy like that, especially a quarterback, uh, because he's he's the face of the team. He's done a very good job for us. And, you know, tough, tough home life, uh, but that don't affect him. He's a very loving guy, caring guy, spends a lot of time in this community uh, working with a lot of young kids and spend a lot of time with Habitat. Uh, for you, humanity. That. Well, I'm gonna let you go, but uh, it's a lot like it was when you were over here. You know, you, it, it, I get asked that all the time, Barry. Asked this morning, you walk down the hall if you wanted to see Coach Bryant, you had to knock on the door, or at least I did. Everybody else did too. You probably knocked on the door, and Coach Saban, you knock on the door, and it's when they walk down the hall, it's a little bit of ill at ease. You know, <laughs> you're not you're just sure what exactly. You've been down that road yourself. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Yep. You know, you know, no, you know. It's one of those deals. Like, dude, you just say, "Where's Coach Bryant today? I want to play golf." <laughs> you know, but, uh, is he gonna yeah, be around? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, I think, I think Nick is on the back nine. Let's go on the front nine. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's that kind of deal going on over here. But the difference is that where Coach Bryant, they kind of migrated to him. He's got so many guys working for him and so much money spent, so many assistant athletic directors. If they all went to the restroom at the same time, it would be a long line. <laughs> uh, he got, he's got everybody doing everything. So it should be should be a heck of a game, Woody, and I appreciate you taking time to be on our show. And well, I appreciate you, you all asking me. Uh, it, to be get over here, here, call me. I'm, I'm right here, right okay. around. All right, good to talk to y'all. Good to talk Thanks, to you. Coach. Thank Have you. Have a safe trip out to Arizona. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right, bye now.